This is 7.9 autonomic nervous system notes. The essential question is, what are the divisions of the autonomic nervous system and how are they similar or different? The autonomic nervous system is the branch of the peripheral nervous system and there are two divisions, the sympathetic division, which is associated with fight or flight in an emergency, it kicks in during emergency situation and then the parasympathetic division is associated with everyday daily functions. Here is a chart showing you the overall um, breakdown or organization of the nervous system. Remember there are two major divisions which is the central nervous system which is made up of the brain and the spinal cord and then you have the peripheral nervous system that is made up of the cranial and the spinal nerves. The peripheral nervous system is the connection between the central nervous system and the rest of the body and so there is sensory division that sends information to the peripheral nervous system and to the central nervous system. That's the blue arrow. That's the sensory pathway. Then in the red is the motor, sense, uh, central nervous system, the brain and the spinal cord, and the peripheral nervous system send information to the motor division, which is made up of two divisions, the autonomic nervous system, which is the, uh, the involuntary functions, and then the somatic division, or the somatic nervous system deals with the voluntary control of the skeletal muscles. We've already discussed the how the muscles are um, controlled by the nerves, the somatic division. So now this note is going to talk about the autonomic nervous system and the two divisions that make up the autonomic nervous system. The sympathetic division originates in the thoracolumbar segment of the spinal cord from the levels of the thoracic one to the lumbar, to the second lumbar area of the spinal cord. They synapse in near the spinal cord. Remember, synapse is a junction between, it could be between two neurons, or it could be neuron and a muscle, neuron, a neuron and a gland or an organ, and a ganglia is in a bulge in the spinal in the nerve where there is a collection of cell bodies. Remember cell bodies contain the dendrites which connect to other nerves so that's where the synapse is. So if you think of the cell body as the thickest portion and you have a bunch of cell bodies all collected together it's going to cause a, cause a bulge and that's what a ganglia is. In sympathetic division that ganglia is going to be near the, um, the spinal cord. This means that the two nerves that are involved in the autonomic nervous system, the preganglionic nerve, which is the one that comes before the ganglion, and the postganglionic nerve that comes after the ganglion, the, the in sympathetic division, it has a short preganglionic nerve, and it has a long postganglionic nerve. Here is a diagram showing you the difference between a somatic motor neuron and an autonomic motor neuron. Remember that somatic motor neuron is the division that deals with the voluntary function and specifically the skeletal muscles. And notice that there, are, there is only one neuron that sends information from the spinal cord to the effector organ and in this case the effector organ is the skeletal muscle. In the autonomic motor neuron deals with the involuntary the body functions that you don't control there are two nerves and the two nerves they synapse or have a junction at the ganglion. Ganglion remember is a collection of cell bodies so this neuron right here has a cell body here and if you have a bunch of neurons all collected in that area that cell body is going to is much thicker than the rest of the nerve so it's going to bulge and that bulge is called the ganglia. Ganglion is one and ganglia is plural. Now because of the synapse there are two nerves involved the one that comes before the ganglion is called preganglionic neuron. The neuron that comes after the ganglion is called the postganglionic neuron. And because in the sympathetic division, 
the ganglion is near the spinal cord, it's going to have a short preganglionic neuron and it's going to have a long postganglionic neuron and because it has to it it's going to be away from the body and it's going to be attached to whatever organ that it is controlling the neurotransmitters that are involved in the sympathetic division is epinephrine and norepinephrine the effector organs specifically for the Sympathetic division is the eyes, the lungs, heart, your muscle function. And usually the sympathetic division is going to raise everything. It's going to heighten your vision. It's going to increase your respiration. It's going to increase your heart rate. It's going to increase your blood circulation. It's going to make your muscles work much better. Situations where the sympathetic divisions will kick in is, is during exercise, any type of excitement, emergency, embarrassment, any kind of non-normal situation or emergency situation is when the sympathetic division kicks in. The parasympathetic division originates in the brainstem and then it has a gap and then it has a sacral portion from the first sacral to the uh, to fourth sacral level. The synapse is, or the ganglia is near the effector organ, therefore it's going to have a long preganglionic neuron and it's going to have a short postganglionic neuron. The neurotransmitter that is involved in the parasympathetic division is the acetylcholine, which is the same one for the uh, somatic motor neuron, the, the muscle, and the effector organs are your salivary glands, your digestive organs, and your reproductive organs. It does affect your heart, lungs, but it has the opposite effect than the sympathetic. It's going to uh, decrease your respiration. It's going to decrease your circulation. It's going to decrease your heart rate and your digestive function and your reproductive function would be uh, f functioning. Uh, the, the situations where the parasympathetic division will kick in is normal everyday activities. Uh, your digestion, defecation, which is pooping, and diuresis, which is urination. So any kind of daily activity is the parasympathetic. Here you see the diagram showing you the three different types of neurons. The first one is the somatic neuron again. Here's the cell body with the axon goes all the way to the effector organ and the effector organ is going to be skeletal muscles and the neurotransmitter is acetylcholine. Then the sympathetic, remember their ganglia is near the spinal cord so it's going to have a short preganglionic neuron and it's going to have a long postganglionic neuron and the neurotransmitter is going to be it says acetylcholine here but it's going to be epinephrine and norepinephrine and the effector organs are going to be your heart, lungs, eyes and it's going to heighten their effects, increase their effects. The last one parasympathetic because the, the ganglion is near the effect organ, it's going to have a long preganglionic neuron and it's going to have a short postganglionic neuron and the neurotransmitter is acetylcholine and the organ that it's going to affect is the digestive organs and the reproductive organ and for organs like the heart, the lungs, then it's going to have a decreased inhibitory function as in slowing it down. So here is the breakdown of the organs that are affected by the individual divisions, the parasympathetic and the sympathetic. And notice that there is a parallel in the organs that they affect, but they have opposite effect. So an example for the eyes, in sympathetic, the eyes dilate, which means the opening into the eyes are open, so you can see better. In an emergency situation, you want to be aware of any kind of danger. In parasympathetic, you're not really in danger, so your eyes are constricted. Uh, again, heart rate goes up in sympathetic. You're nervous, scared. Um, 
blood flowing so your organs are working well, your muscles are working well to get you out of an emergency situation. In a normal everyday situation, your heart is uh, your heart rate is slowed, your breathing is slowed, you're relaxed. And the digestive organs, notice in the parasympathetic, they are actually stimulated. In the sympathetic, your digestive system is kind of shut down. So that's the reason why when you are nervous and when you're scared, it's, you know, you have problems with digestive functions. So just look, in, look over the, the different organs that they affect and how they have opposite effects. And look at the levels where the parasympathetic areas um, are found. Notice the brainstem area and the sacral area. And then the sympathetic is in the thoracolumbar area. 7.9 notes homework. Number one, what is the function or purpose of the autonomic nervous system? Number two, how are the divisions of the autonomic nervous system similar and different in structure and in appearance? Number three, how are the divisions of the autonomic nervous system similar and different in function?